will be recorded or will be removed when the recording starts. So uh, hopefully it didn't remove you, Allison. If it did, please come back in. Um, it looks like you're still here. So that's weird. I, I, I don't know why that's been happening here. So, um, okay, so welcome. We are here and we are talking about uh, Google Drawings. Uh, Google Drawings kind of, if I can make any comparison, is gonna be to Microsoft Draw. So a really simple drawing program to do some documents, uh, some drawings within documents. Nothing really fantastic. I generally stick to some geometric shapes. I want to show you a couple examples uh, that I just went and grabbed. If you do a search for Google Drawings template, you will get a ridiculous amount of them out there. There is so, so many uh, that we can do. I have a couple ideas on things we want to share, and then we want to jump into the tool, and I want to show you um, what it can do. So I'm going to share my screen here. so that we can jump right into what this looks like. All right, brilliant. Hopefully you guys are seeing my screen. I should actually, uh, yeah, no, we'll just go with that. So, um, okay, cool. So Google Drawings, if we go into our drive, I, I use my Google Drive as my doorway to my entire Google world. I was just talking in my entire Google file world. I was just talking to a teacher this morning and she said she was going through docs and, and it, I struggled in my head because I don't know why I would use the docs app or something like that. Oh, good, Allison, right on, it didn't kick you out. And I don't know why it said that, so. Um, but I use this as my doorway. Part of it is because I can keep everything all organized. But if I go into my drive, I'm just gonna grab a folder here. I have a I have a folder that I call the testing grounds. And the reason I call it that is because I know that anything I put in there, um, I cannot, if you click on the screen, Shibana, it will uh, it'll give you the opportunity to um, to pin it and it'll make it slightly bigger. I will zoom in a little bit, actually. Maybe that's what you're asking for. So I will zoom in a little bit so that we can see. Um, anything I put into the testing grounds here, I know that I can delete and not worry about it at all. So I know that any of the files in here are just for me to play with. If something goes wrong, I'm not worried about losing anything. So inside a new, we can jump down into the more, and that's where we find our Google Drawings. So that's where we're gonna get to it in there. Here's a couple ones that I wanna show you a couple examples of things that you might be able to do with it. So this is a six panel uh, comic book one. And as I make this bigger, it doesn't, I think it is, yeah, it's not really zooming in on that. Uh, essentially it's using a Google drawing. We did a custom size. So I did a uh, eight and a half, actually I did an eight by 10 and a half. So it would fit on an eight and a half by 11 sheet centered in there. Just did uh, six quick panels, some text boxes down below for text, and then some, uh, some thought bubbles down here and text bubbles up here that can be moved around, copied, pasted, moved all over and stuff like that. So a simple one that you could then use in classroom, assign to the students, so make a copy for all of them. That's why I like these Google uh, tools not because they are the best out there, but because the managing, you know, to manage the sharing permissions and everything is so, so simple. So we can use that, make a copy for everybody, get it out there, our students log in with the same login and we're good to go. So, so there's an example of this one. Here's one, and I, I wish I knew who I got this from. Um, and and I, I feel bad not giving them permission. It was from a school division, I think in Florida, uh, this is a Freire model for vocabulary. So again, we have our definition, facts, or characteristics, examples, non-examples, right? All of that stuff. The students would then create all of this. One of the reasons I liked this model, number one, there's nothing fantastic about it. There's nothing fantastic about the, the template that they're given here. But again, we can assign this to our students or they can make copies of it. And they could, they could create essentially their own word wall, their own word book or something like that. What I liked about this one is you'll see that there are some objects that are outside of the, the stage, 
for lack of a better term. So there's objects that are outside, all of these definitions and stuff like that over on the left-hand side, and then all of these additional icons that are over on the right-hand side. Those, if we printed the image or if we pasted the image into something, would not come with it. They are outside of the stage. So we are only looking at what's on the stage. Things on the outside can be little characters that we're bringing in at, at a later point, but they are as part of the file. So we can include that when we give it to the kids or when we're working on our own, but they don't come out when we do the printing uh, and whatnot. So, so there's some very cool stuff that can go on inside of there. All right, so there's a couple examples. These are the last two, actually, sorry, I'll show you these ones as well. I had two more uh, that I was just grabbing. Um, this is from Eric Curtis. I love Eric Curtis. Control Alt Achieve is his website. Uh, he created one for checkers. So I'm just thinking we got our kids at home and we want them to be doing something. Uh, we could make a copy or they can make a copy of this te uh, template, share it between two students and then jump in here and play a little game of checkers, right? So um, super simple. And for, for those that want to, you know, challenge it a little bit more, he's also got a chess one available. So I dropped these all in a folder. I'll share the, the folder shared with you, but I will, uh, I'll give you the link to the folder so that you can make copies of them and, and whatever else you need to do. But I thought that these were kind of some cool interactive ones where we could keep our kids going, you know, keep our kids chatting with each other and everything. But let's get into the tool. So the tool is fairly straightforward. It is best described as a single page Google slide. So any of the tools that are available in a Google slide are also available in Google Drawings and vice versa. So anything that we do in one, we can also do in the other. It's, it's kind of, this is a double whammy on our webinar system here. So, so first thing we wanna do is figure out how big of a drawing we want. Easiest way to adjust, and sometimes we're adjusting this after the fact, down in the bottom right corner, you see that little uh, dark corner there. We can grab that and we can change the size of our drawing. And it doesn't look like it changed too much, but it is changing. We can slide it as big or as small as we want, and we can also make it bigger, okay? That's way number one to do that. That's kind of on the fly, just need something going on, a little bit of an adjustment that we wanna do. To be a little more precise, we wanna jump into the file menu, and we wanna go down to page setup. So this one is also available in Google Slides. If you wanna do a custom Google Slideshow, custom size, and we change it, it defaults to standard four by three. That's where it starts out with. We're gonna go down to custom, and I'm gonna set it for uh, a page, a, a regular uh, letter size page, and I'm gonna set it to print portrait. So up and down, we're gonna do, it's eight and a half by 11, so I'm gonna do an eight by, 10.5 and apply. You don't really see that much of a difference in your template, but if we were to bring that in or if we were to print it out, it's going to give us that full size printing. So super simple, easy to adjust, done. Life is good. All right, how do we add the shapes? I'm sure that you guys know all of the shape tools up here. We can insert, we can either go to the insert drop down. And we have our image text box. I kind of stay away from text boxes and I'll tell you why in a second. We have our shapes, tables if we need it, uh, charts, diagrams and stuff like that. If we're doing charts, uh, if you are a Google uh, Sheets or a spreadsheet type person that creates a sheet or a, sorry, a chart within a sheet, you can actually sync the two. So you can input the chart into your uh, drawing or into your document. And then it'll ask you, do you want to link these two? So essentially it's saying when you make a change to one, do you want it to be represented in the other? If, if you're using a presentation over and over with the same data, you're just slightly changing it. That's an easy way to keep that presentation up to date and going there. So uh, diagram, word art, and line down here. We I use the lines a lot. I'll show you that when we get to flow charts and kind of organizing different systems here. So. At any point, I feel like I'm talking, but also I see my list of things. If you have a question, fire it in. I got the chat window open here, so so I will see it. I will see it pop up. So please feel free to fire it in, fire it in there. I'm going to jump into the shapes. Uh, sorry, same tools are down here. I, I use the icons a little bit more lately, but same tools are here. Going to give you the same ideas. I'm going to jump into the shapes, and I am going to create a circle now. 
unless you are extremely uh, extremely good at this, creating a perfect circle can be slightly difficult to get it exactly right. We usually go close enough and shut her down. If you use the shift key, the shift key will keep an exact circle. So no matter where I move this, it, it isn't going to let me go beyond that. If I was doing it with a square, again, we can make a crazy rectangle, but that shift key is going to give me an exact square. So just so you're aware, that's a simple way. We'll get rid of that square. That's a simple way to uh, adjust a, uh, a shape to make it an exact perfect shape. Now I have this one labeled three circle Venn diagram or three circle Venn. So I'm just gonna move it over. I'm gonna copy, control C and paste off two more copies. All right, so this is a great time to talk about the lines that are showing up. If you see that red line that's coming across the middle or if I slide over, there's gonna be one that's going vertically. Those are just alignment lines. So what that's actually allowing me to do, I'm gonna move this shape out of the way here. What that's actually allowing me to do is center the center of one circle with the center of the other. So as we're sort of organizing it, it's gonna give us some points here. Now it's on the edge. Now it's on the bottom of the circle that's far to the right. And we're just gonna get it in the center there and be good. I know that's not exactly where I want it. I just wanted to show you these. If it goes from edge to edge, like this line right here, that's telling us it's in the very center of the page. And we can actually center in the center of the page completely by doing that, finding that double line. So if you see it again, there's that double red line. All it is is for alignment. I'm just gonna reorganize this a little bit here and get that going. Now, we can draw a square around, excuse me, we can draw a square around all of these and we can change all of their characteristics at once. What I like to do is I like to make my edges a little bit darker you can change it and you can actually get rid of them 100% if you want by changing it to a transparent edge so you don't see that line around or that outline at all. Um, in this case, I'm going to keep it as a uh, as a solid line so I have a very definitive edge as I start to fade these out. You can also change the type of edge that you want. Um, I guess if you'd like to do that, you could do that. So, and maybe there's a reason to do that. You know what, maybe there would be when we're starting to do some of the connection pieces here. Now we have our three lines in here. They're horribly arranged. Let's see if we can arrange it a little bit better. Maybe about there, there's pretty good Venn diagrams. Okay, the next step that we wanna do if we're doing a Venn diagram is we wanna see those overlapping areas beneath. Our overlapping areas is when we have something that's in two circles and we want it to be in both of them. So we're gonna take our objects that are in the front and we're going to start to just fade them out a bit. So I'm gonna take this one, click on the color. I have my one circle selected and I'm gonna make this guy yellow. We still don't see the back. I'm gonna go back into there and I'm gonna come down to where it says custom. What custom allows me to do is just fade my transparency down a bit. Just do it, say about halfway, click OK. And now we can start to see those circles and the edges coming out from underneath. Let's do this guy here as well. We'll make this one a red. And again, we'll go back in, down to custom. And we'll just fade it down a bit here. Again, I, it's just kind of a guess and check here. Now, the lines underneath aren't perfect, right? We're still seeing a bit of a, a not as true black as we come underneath here but I think they're good enough for what we need them to do. And then if we wanted to, we could change that last one as well. All right, let's say that we really like this red color, we wanted it to the front. One of the things you're gonna find is as you bring in different pieces, it's like a transparency, it always goes to the top. So we're laying different transparencies over the top. One of the things you may wanna do is move something more forward or more to the back. So if we right click on any of these objects, we get another set of uh, menus here. We're gonna go down to order. And I'm just gonna say bring to the front. Actually, let's do it with this blue one so we know it's coming all the way to the front. We're gonna right click on it. If you're on a Chromebook, right click is two fingers. So just tap with two fingers. We'll go down to order and we'll say bring to the front. Bring forward, we'll bring it up one stage. So if I do this one again and I go to order and I say send, uh, backwards, excuse me, send backwards, not send to the back. It'll push it back one stage. So one level of our sandwich, essentially, it's going back. And then if we wanted, we could then go in here and 
change our uh, transparency on that to make it all nice and matching. Again, all we're doing is just sliding it. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be close enough. And then we have a really quick uh, Venn diagram where we can start to get the kids doing work with. Or if we're doing it for ourselves, we can start to do some different uh, different pieces in there, adding characters, adding values, and things like that. So uh, as I'm going through, I don't see any questions. I will pause ever so briefly here so I can cross some stuff off my list. If you guys have any questions, throw them in there. So, Oops. All right, I'm not seeing any typing, so I'm gonna keep going. We're about halfway done here. So I wanna make sure we get through a lot of this stuff. There is a lot of things we can do. I'm gonna use the same uh, diagram here. I'm gonna break it up a little bit just so we can make use of this because I wanna show you um, the connectors. I, I use these a lot. We do a lot of flow charts and stuff with our tech team here. And so I use these, I use the elbow connectors, but I know some people prefer the curve connectors. I'll show you what they are. Our connectors are just essentially going to let us join two objects in here. So if you notice, as I arrow around, we get a bunch of purple dots. So if I wanna connect this purple dot to that purple dot, so that I have a flow chart, a line that's going in between them, I can do that. Up here, I get a new menu that's specific to this line. So the line is highlighted. You see, it's kind of got a pale blue around it. It's highlighted. I can change the color. I can change the thickness. I usually go a bit thicker on all of these because they're pretty thin. And I can change the end. So I like this. I'm going to go back to black here. I like this because it allows me in a flowchart situation to say, start with this, go to this, then to this, right? The other thing that I really like about um, using these connectors as opposed to just drawing lines is if I start to move one of my shapes around, or both of my shapes around, it will keep that connection and it will try as best it can to get a line that is least obtrusive. Now, sometimes it doesn't and sometimes it has to cross through. So we just have to adjust on our end, but it tries to get a line that doesn't cross over the other objects if possible. So it's gonna give you a nice easy flow chart. I said before, I'm not a fan necessarily of the text box. And that's because if you double click on any of these, you can enter text inside of them. I find that that's a little bit easier because then, and we're gonna adjust the size, we'll make it a little bit bigger. Same formatting options. We can change our font, make it a nice, I got a lobster I think in here somewhere. A nice cursive lobster, oops, there we go. Um, it's, it's embedded in that object. So when we take that object and we start to move it, we don't have to worry about grouping the text boxes in there. We can just move it all at once and we can take care of it. Now, if we wanna put a text box, absolutely. Feel free to grab that text box and throw it in there. But uh, I prefer this method or I've been using this method more. So um, click on an object. If we said, oh, I wish instead of a circle, I had used a uh, let's say a little pie. We can change it on the fly as well. So it will, if we have text in there, it will change it ever so slightly. If we went to that pie there as well. Maybe it doesn't work quite as nice and we have to add in an enter or a, a line break in there or two to make it work. But you can start to adjust in that case as well and you can move things around, so. So we've added shapes, we've added text, we've added connectors. All right, what's next? I'm gonna clear some space here. I'm just gonna move these guys out of the way. And I'm gonna insert an image because I think that this is one that is somewhat useful. So we're gonna grab a picture of a moose and we're gonna bring that moose in there, okay. Easy enough, found a picture of a moose that we want and we want to put it in there. But I don't necessarily like the way that that moose is. So I can stretch that out. We can change the shape of that moose and make it nice and big and nice or nice and small. If you double click on it, you'll see that the edges suddenly became dark lines. Those are for cropping. 
So if you want to crop in on a moose or sorry, <laughs> on the shape that you want specifically, you can do it like that. You can also just select, we'll select off of there. You can select the tool and the crop tool and the same little handles on the corners and the edges come up as well. So you can just move those. Okay. One of the things to know is any of your square corners or square edges, those are going to be for changing size. It just squashes everything together, as you probably have noticed before. So that may be where we want to crop. And any of the dots, that's going to be for rotating. So we can also rotate if we want to do that. All right. So here comes a cool bit, though. Let's select our picture of our moose. And right beside the crop tool, the crop tool is right here, crop image, is a little drop down for masking. So let's say that we wanted our moose to be the very center of our left right arrow call out. What it will do is it will take that picture in the background and it will apply a mask over top of it. So the picture is the same size, but what it's done is it's just identified that we want to put that mask over top of it. So you can start to use that to create your identification arrows or something like that in your diagrams or start to, you know, uh, maybe this is one that we want to do. Uh, we want to shape and we love our children. So we're going to make them into the sunshine, right? And so there we go. We can, that's a horrible uh, cropping of that. We might want to go in and like recrop that image. So the moose face is more central, but essentially we can start to, uh, we can start to monkey around with our images and apply that crop over top really easily. So, all right. So far so good, any questions? We talked about order, we talked about, okay, one thing that we didn't talk about, we're gonna get rid of this guy. We're gonna bring these shapes back in. One thing that we can do, if you have your object set up, we only have two of them. If we wanted to distribute them, we kind of need, let's make three, let's bring in a third. And we'll bring in that third object. Um, if we wanted to make sure they were evenly spaced out, under the format, oops, sorry, that's not right. Memories of Pac-Man, yes. <laughs> if we right click on them, down below we can align them and we can distribute them. So aligning will bring them all to the center of their image, okay? It doesn't bring it to the center of the stage. It looks at the left-hand side of this shape. Oops of the shape that's on the left and the right hand side of the shape that's on the right. So here and here, and it will bring it to the center of there. Likewise, if we did a vertical distribution and we say we want it all at the top, it's gonna bring all of our objects to that very top there and it'll align them all along the top. So it's bringing them all into the same plane, it's centering them all. And now that we have them all in the same plane, we can go down to distribute and we can say we want to distribute them horizontally. So now what that's going to do, why did that one move so far? We should be able to distribute horizontally and it should give us equal spacing between them. So let's move this one a little tighter just so we can make that a little bit more obvious. I'm going to do our distribute horizontally. And now we have them distributed. So we have equal spacing in between them. So if you're trying to organize, I don't know, let's say, for example, a seating chart or something with it where you have rows of children and you want that spacing to be all the same, get four in a row, highlight it, put one on the far edge, one on the other far edge, highlight them all, say distribute horizontally, and they will all be there, right? You can also do that vertically as well. So we can also space them out vertically as well. All right, all right, still going, still going, ordering alignment capture. Okay, I wanna show you something really quickly. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. 
and I'm going to switch over. Okay, cool. So I don't know how many of you are working on a Chromebook and how many of you are working on a, um, a Windows machine or something like that, but on Chrome OS, we also have the ability to do screen captures. So this is, uh, this is horrible. My lighting is absolutely horrendous here, but hopefully you guys can see. We have the control key. Ooh, we'll do it over here. We have the control key right here. And then up at the top, we have like our multi-window display. So this is going to give us all the windows that we have available. If you do control and that one, now it's not going to work for me. I wonder if it can't screen capture when it's doing here. If you do control and this one, it will capture the entire window. It'll take a picture of the whole window. If you do control shift and this one, oh, there we go. That's what I was looking for. We'll come back here, control shift and this. It will allow you to highlight and capture a specific part of the screen. So if I want to, a lot of the screen captures that I do, I only want to do a little drop down menu and I want it to be visible. We can do that in this way. So for example, if we were giving our students instruction on how to switch cameras in a meet, I might open up this and bring my mouse up here over switch camera. And then I'm going to do a control shift and the windows key or in that, I don't know, the square with two lines on it key. And it's going to, this stays highlighted, but it's going to now allow me to highlight that portion of my screen. And it will do a screen capture of that portion. So now I have that, that I can input into my drawing and I can start to, uh, start to add the different pieces around it. I can start to highlight maybe a certain piece of text or something like that, that I want the students to click on. So for some reason, I am thinking that that didn't screen capture so well, because I didn't get the pop-up that I usually get. But, I will see what we can see here. Um, what I generally do, let's see. I'm going to do this on this one here really quickly here. No, it's not grabbing it. I think because it's in the meat, it doesn't like to do that screen capture. Um, but essentially what I would do, and I, I apologize for this, what I would do is I generally grab one of my objects when I'm trying to highlight text. I change my border to red and I make my weight a little bit thicker on the lines to really make that pop. And then I come into my fill and I make it transparent. So essentially what I have is that overlaying the text and so this is sort of highlighting where I want the students to click or where I want you guys to click. So you see, we have a couple of comments. We see it. Okay, perfect. Brilliant. So, okay, uh, so Jason, show that again. Where did you, what did you make transparent? The fill? Yes. Yep. So, so that right was, here, the yeah, little color bucket here. Okay. Yep. So it's the paint bucket. Yeah, because okay. otherwise, let's bring, we'll bring this guy over here and I'm going to bring this to the front. Oh, it must be on the front. If I didn't have it transparent, if I had it the color it was before, which I think is here, what we do is we see that that, that text gets washed out. And so in order to make sure that the text doesn't get washed out and is still highlighted, I make the fill transparent, but I leave my edge a bright color. And then a lot of times I'll use the connectors with arrows to kind of walk through to the next step as we're going through here. So uh, last, last thing I wanna show you really quickly here. Is we've lost inside it. Share there, uh, Jason. Oh, is it? There you We'll try it again here. We'll get yeah. you set up. So, thank you, Allison. Entire screen, 
and there we go. So the last thing I want to show you guys really quickly here is uh, under insert in documents, we also have drawings here. So you can actually work right inside of Google Docs if you're doing this. I use this a lot for our flowcharts and everything like that. Or if you already have one, you can add it from your drive. So if I wanted to add it from my drive, I'm going to grab this three circle Venn. And just like I was telling you guys, do you want to link it to your source? In which case, if we link it to the source, whenever we make a change to one, it will be updated in the other or do we want to leave it unlinked? So if we inserted like this and then made a change, um, we would be able to see that. But generally what I like to do, my goodness, generally what I like to do inside of here, because I know it's not going to be some massive drawing is I just create a new drawing. And it gives me that full scope of tools. Everything that I saw before, I can now see inside here. I can set my background color just like, and I, sorry, I didn't show you how to do this. If you right click, you can pop down to background and you can set your background color. So if you want it white or blue or red or black or a really dark purple, you can set that. And then all of the same tools are in there. So you can move, you can adjust, you can create those shapes and everything like that. So, so I'm right here at the end. Thank you guys for your time. I hope that you got something out of it. I hope that I answered some of your questions. I know I missed a bunch of stuff. Um, but if you have any questions about any of this, feel free to jump in, search any of this stuff, fire me the question and uh, yeah, enjoy. And we will, uh, we'll see you guys again. I'll stick around to answer any questions too, so. And I'll stop recording so that it doesn't go on forever. <laughs>